Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Clap your hands all you people. 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 And give the Lord a shout of praise. If you can lift your leg, if you can raise your hand, if you can jump, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. For January to February to March and now April, somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once again, I want to say a big thank you for the privilege to do this. Thank you so much. God bless you real good. Are you ready, Elevation? Let's go. Help me tell your neighbor, give me some space. Give me some space. Give me some space. I want to show you something. Are you ready? One, two, three, set. I come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want to Everybody.
140. How many God's children are here this morning? Elevation, are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, help me bring your fellow God's children to the front here. Yeah. I want to see them in the front here. Yeah. Where them there? Where them there? Where them there? Where them there? Aha! 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 If your neighbor is not cooperating, don't force your neighbor. God's children, let me hear you scream! Now let me see your hand like this one time. Help me. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Then this is okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Everybody, my daddy, my daddy. Somebody jump on 
When you sing this next song, you'll be doing like this. Because you are receiving anointing for increase. Anointing for your next level. Everybody do like this. Say, I receive. I receive. I receive. When you do it, I want to see you jump and receive it. Are you ready? Say, oh yeah, we're who's anointing. Just enough 
Somebody who is praising God, I wanted to give the Lord a big, 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 big shout. <laughs> Lift your hands to Jesus all over this place and just bless him. Just bless him, just bless him. Can, can, can we lift that song to him? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hip hop, can, can, we, can we lift that song that... That us and raise to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands to him all over this place. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. Bombs, who, who, who is doing that for me, please? Who is i 
lift your hands to him and just bless him. Father, we return our praise and our gratitude to you, our keeper, the lover of our souls, our soul provider, the one who watches over us, our source, our sustainer. We love on you today and we bless you. Thank you for the benefit of seeing another month. Thank you for keeping us to this fourth month of the year 2024. Accept our praise today. Accept our worship today. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Our comforter, we bless your name. Our all in all, we bless your name. Our source, we bless your name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your compassion because they fail not. Great is your faithfulness. Take all the glory, our Father. Take all the honor, our Father. We bless your name. Wave those hands to him all over this place. Bless the name of Jesus. And just appreciate him and just thank him. Just thank him. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves our dance. He deserves our singing. He deserves everything. And we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, our Father. We bless your holy name. In the precious name of Jesus, we have worshiped. And so, our Heavenly Father, we honor your presence in this place. Thank you for the month of April. Thank you for the month of April. Thank you for the month of April. So, we declare that April is accident free for us. We declare that April is sickness free for us. April is pain free for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. as we have praised you today, praise will not depart from our lips. Amen. Every day of April, there will be something to praise you for. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We ask, Father, that you receive this praise, that you receive our dance, that you receive our shout. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you deserve much more. You deserve much more. You deserve much more. We thank you, our Father, and we bless your holy name. Today we ask that you charge your word with power. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one other influence of my voice remain the same. Everyone in this room, everyone online, give us an encounter with your presence. Let your word find a, a resting place in our heart. Let the new month open new doors into the depth of the riches of your knowledge in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory and praise. Somebody put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. Have your seat. Glory to God. I want to welcome everyone joining us online into this service. I wanted to put distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's word today. The Bible says he sent his word, and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. I want you to make up your mind that in the month of April, you're going to open up your heart to the word of God like never before. Because the word of God will do you good in this new month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, somebody say better. Amen. Amen. Uh, can you hear me? I appreciate Tosin B for that powerful, powerful time of praising the name of Jesus. Thank you, Tosin, and thank you to your team also. Praise God. Look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor, welcome to April. Welcome to April. Look at somebody and say, welcome to a new month. Welcome to a new month. I tell your neighbor, say, God has a great plan for you in this new month. This new month. Say, make up your mind, up your mind. To, align to align with his plan, with his plan. not just your own plan. Say the plans of God are the best plans for you. Say it's time to align. Look at somebody and say it's time to align. Say I say unto thee, align. Praise God. I said praise God. I just want to, uh, before I get into the word this, uh, this time, to just uh, say to somebody here, that it's not the will of God for you to just be running from pillar to post. God has a plan for your life. 
God has a plan for your life. And he's a good father. He's a good father. I want you to listen to what I'm saying right now. He's a good father. He has a plan for your life. And he wants you to work with him. He knows where the treasures are. He knows where your heart desires are. He, he, he drew out the, the map and the plan of the universe and of your destiny. And he, he wants to guide you. And there's a level of devotion and, and you know, a surrenderedness that makes you maximize or that will help you to maximize God's plans for your life. Your best plans are still, you know, can only try. Your best plans for yourself. His plan is the best plan for your life. Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, he, has a, he had a plan, an original intention for your life. And it's time for you to start to align. You know, sometimes people think, oh, I still have time. We're already in the fourth month of this year. If you want to maximize this year, then you need to align with God's plans because he has plans. You don't want to look back and just all of a sudden we're in October or November and say, where is the year? I've done everything within my own power and my struggle. But it does not look like the rubber is touching the road. And God says, draw closer. Let me unfold my plan and let me hold your hands and walk you through my plan. Yeah, just walk you through my plans. Because when God is walking with you, surely, goodness and mercy, you are not going to look for them, they're going to follow you. That's God's original intention for you. We don't look for goodness and mercy. Yeah, His goodness is running after us. It's following us all the days of our lives. And I'm speaking to somebody here right now, if it looks like you're looking for goodness and it's eluding you, slow down. Maybe you are outpacing God. Yeah, maybe you are outpacing him. You need to slow down and just walk with him because he has a great plan for your life. Somebody receive that today. Do you receive that today? Put your hands together one more time. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, let's get into the word of God. We're starting a new teaching series uh, today. It will take us into the next four to five weeks. And... Uh, this has been tagged a legacy of faith. We have, have a two-minute um, intro video that our multimedia team has put together. I want to take a listen to that. Multimedia, please roll. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then the prophecy came, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so the journey began. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. Most assuredly, I say to you, He who believes in Me, the work that I do, He will do also. And greater works than these He will do, because I go to My Father. As Christ passed the baton to His disciples, he ignited a flame that would continue to burn brightly through the ages. And now, in this present age, the Holy Spirit's presence remains ever potent. From one generation to the next, the legacy of faith is passed on like a torch illuminating the path of believers. And as heirs to this timeless legacy, we are called to embrace it, to wield it with faith 
and courage. Get ready as we delve deep into transformative power of community and togetherness. We'll explore the courage and pioneering spirit needed to carve new pathways all under the guidance of the holy spirit the very essence of innovation and creativity join us on this journey of discovery as we honor the legacy of faith and embrace the move of the spirit as i said, praise the lord I hear me tell your neighbor, say, it's time to engage the move of the Spirit in your life. Praise God. I'm going to be reading from two passages of the scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 to 11, and 2 Timothy 1, verse 5 to 7. The legacy of faith engaging the move of the Spirit. In this teaching series that will take us the next few months, uh, we're going to uh, walk with the Holy Spirit to help you to appreciate the vision of God for your life and for his church, to glean you know, wisdom and empowering insight from the history of the early church and the courage and the resilience of the saint that, has, uh, that bequeathed to us the legacy of faith that we have right now. We're going to uh, dig a little bit into your responsibility and my responsibility at passing this legacy of faith like a baton to the next generation uh, so that we can empower them to do, do the will of God. Uh, uh, we also uh, trust God that this teaching series will inspire you and give you courage as a believer to stand strong in faith, to engage the wisdom of God and the pioneering spirit that has pervaded every generation as the legacy of faith has been passed on from generation to generation and that this baton will not drop in your hand in the precious name of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 from verse number 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Verse 9 says, Now when he had spoken these things, he's talking about Christ speaking to his disciples post-resurrection, just before he ascended. Uh, in verse 9 said, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up. And in a cloud, uh, a cloud received him out of their sight, just like the aircraft. When the aircraft, you know, takes off, we, could, we, we can see it up to the point when it gets to a particular altitude. It's as if the cloud has received it from our sight. That was uh, the kind of sight that the disciples of Christ saw at his ascension. Verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel, by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, from this scripture, we see uh, what happened after Easter. Jesus came back as the resurrected king appeared to his disciples. Some guys saw him on the way to Emmaus. He appeared to like 50 of another disciples. He saw his disciples. Uh, Peter said, I go out fishing. And then he appeared to them and, you know, uh, had a meal with them. And all of a sudden, they realized that this was Christ. But at a point in time, he gave them the charge that they should tarry here in Jerusalem until power came upon them from, will come from one eye, and then they saw him, you know, go. And the angels told them, this same Jesus, the same way you saw him, um, you're seeing him now going, he will doubtless return. We're living in an age in between the, the, the ascension of Christ and the return of Christ. And in between these two occurrences, 
uh, we will have dispensations, times, and generations that will have to propagate this faith and hold it to our chest like something that is very dear to us. Let me read another scripture, uh, 2 Timothy uh, verse one, I mean chapter one and verse number five, five, six, and seven. Paul was writing to Timothy and he had this to say in this writing. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I'm persuaded it's in you also. Can you hear me ask your neighbor, say, do you have genuine faith in your heart? <laughs> so therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Paul, writing to Timothy, said, I've seen genuine faith in your heart. It has come from generation to generation. And I'm asking you, you, who is now the custodian of this faith, that you stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. It says, for God, verse 7 says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, as we explore the legacy of faith, it's important for us first and foremost to understand, like we read from Acts chapter 1, that we are in between time and dispensations. The ascension of Christ and there is the, the return of Christ, which we call the rapture. And in between this dispensation, God has a big plan. And you and I are just, uh, uh, you know, just like a puzzle, uh, a piece of the puzzle. We, we, we have a part to play. And we, we, we have this part to play collectively as a church of Jesus Christ, locally, as a local church, the Elevation Church globally, which is a subset of the body of Christ, Ecclesia, the called out ones, everyone called out of darkness into the light of Jesus around the world, practicing this faith in different shades, fashion, and form. We have our part to play. Then you have your part to play because Paul then brought it down to Timothy, writing to Timothy, and speaking to the heart of the matter as it pertains to Timothy. So from the large picture, to a smaller picture of a local church, then to a much smaller picture of you and the part that you need to play. You know, it's possible for you to practice your Christianity in isolation, thinking that it's, it's, it's just based on your own idiosyncrasies or it's based on what suits you. But the faith, the genuine faith, is not based on what suits you. It is based on the foundations that has been laid. And the Bible says there's no other foundation that can be laid except that which is laid, which is Christ. For your faith to be genuine, it has to be a faith that is laid on the foundation of Christ. Are you still with me today? So Paul, charging Timothy, says, Timothy, you are a third generation Christian. There's the genuineness of faith that I've seen in you that is first found in your grandmother, Lois, and now it's found, I mean, it's found in your mother, Eunice, and now it's found in you. And you need to take responsibility for it, that you find it to flame, the gift of God. Yeah. That you refuse to give in to fear, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Glory be to Jesus. But of power, somebody say power. power. Of love, somebody say love. And of a sound mind. Somebody said there's a sound mind in me. Glory be to Jesus. We are in a generation where soundness of mind is giving way to the weakness of mind. Depression is pervasive everywhere. Mental health issues everywhere. And uh, even, I mean, uh, uh, Christians are not excused from all this. But the truth is that the genuineness of our faith is supposed to push the boundary against all those things. The faith bequeathed to us already has potency to withstand all these things. Fear is not part of that faith that was bequeathed to us. I mean, some of you here, some of, and some people online also, you, you are so blessed. You are, you are like Timothy. 
When I read this uh, scripture, for instance, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit jealous of Timothy. I'm a first generation Christian. Yeah. The Holy Ghost gave us baton. Nobody passed it on to us. Um, my parents were Muslims, so I'm a first generation Christian. Some of you here, you, second generation Christian, third generation Christian. Your, 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 your father, your, your grandfather is uh, an elder in Equa Church or in, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> A Methodist church, you know, or a vicar in Anglican church. You are, you are a second or third generation Christian. There's a faith that has been passed on to you. You have your part to play to hold this faith like your life depends on it and contend for the faith, not to behave anyhow. Yeah, because Jesus died for this faith and it's not in your hand that it will spoil are you still with me today? It's very important because the way some of us carry this thing, you know, you come to church because you need God. No, God needs you. Yeah, he needs you. Because he's counting on you like Paul was writing to Timothy. This faith has been passed down to you. Timothy, it must not spoil in your hand. Yeah. There's a legacy that's been passed down to you. You must not bring shame to this legacy. Is somebody still with me today? You must not bring shame to this legacy. The devil is busy spinning all kinds of narratives. And young people in this congregation, and everyone that will watch this online, please listen to me very well. There's a lie from the pit of hell that says because you are Gen Z or Gen X or whatever, you have freedom to behave anyhow. If you are in this legacy of faith, you don't have freedom to misbehave. Don't let anybody categorize you as a people without a root. Are you still with me today? Yeah. We are, as much as we appreciate all the categorization, the psychographic and psycho whatever, the truth is that there is something that is called the legacy of faith. And every generation has its part to play. Because, you, you know, we can excuse Timothy and say he's Gen Z. So he should misbehave as he likes. Paul, right, to Timothy says, Timothy, something has been passed down to you. You have to take responsibility for it. Yeah. Just, I mean, some people pride themselves in having a praying mother. What about you? Yeah? You are praying mantis. Because <laughs> I don't know what prayer, what, what prayer, as in, I don't know what to call you. Because, I, I, as in, Oh, you know, I've met people before, they'll say, if not for the prayer of my mother, I cannot be here today, you know. Who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? You know, for the prayer of my father. Who are you praying for? Because a legacy of faith has been bequeathed to you. So what happened after the, the, the celebration of resurrection weekend? God's work and purpose on earth moved into the next gear. That's what happened. So like we just celebrated Easter now. The next thing that happened after Easter, after resurrection, was ascension. And then, after ascension, Jesus said, you're going to receive power. You're going to take charge here. This legacy has been bequeathed unto you, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet. The apostles of the Lamb, like we call them in, you know, in church history, are the first 12. Those are the apostles of the Lamb. And then, other early apostles and prophets. And they laid the foundation. We have a history, we have an identity as a people. We are not orphans. You can't practice your faith the way you like. So people laid the foundation and they told us how to live this life, this Christian life. It's a life from the pit of hell that says you, you are a free moral legend. You are a born servant of Jesus Christ, not a free moral legend. Yeah. If you are truly saved, you are joint heirs with Christ. Literally, you know, tied at the hip to Jesus Christ. So you cannot demonstrate any howness in the way you live and think that you can carry this legacy of faith to the next generation. Jesus, post resurrection and ascension, Jesus goes to heaven, but leaves the church, his new body on earth. That's what happened. He leaves us here as his body. And as Jesus follows us, we must continue, you know, to pray, to desire, to seek, 
and understand God's dispensation, his purpose for his dispensation, what's the will of God for his church, what is the will of God for your local church, what's the will of God for a nation. And like I said before, we're living between Jesus' ascension and his impending return. So we, there, there's the calendar that we're living with. In this series also, we examine the return of Christ, which we call the rapture. And we'll see what that portends for us as his people. Are you still with me today? So we're in the middle of God's plan for humanity. And God has great things that he has planned for us. So the story of your life, your local church, and the body of Christ are still unfolding and are meant to display God's master strategy. That's a story that is unfolding. The story of my life, the story of this church, of the body of Christ globally is still unfolding. And it's unfolding into God's original intention, his purpose, and his plan. Can you help your neighbor say, God has a plan for your life? <laughs> say you are not a free moral agent. <laughs> say you are joined to Christ. <laughs> say you are joint heirs with Christ. You are an heir of God and joint heirs with Christ. So God has a plan for your life. And you must work with him to unfold his plans. Glory be to Jesus. Very quickly in this first teaching, let's examine the case study of the early church. The early church. The early church meaning from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 15. If I've not been reading your Bible, you're not going to be comfortable in church this month. I'm just putting it ahead for you. You're not going to be comfortable in church this month. So the whole idea is to steer you to start to read your Bible more. So I recommend this new week, try to read Acts 1 to 15. So you can even come ab you know, abreast with the history of the early church. What happened? What happened? These little people, these 120 people that tarried in the upper room and they were praying and the day of Pentecost came, then what happened after then? Then what, how did they leave? Because today, when we say do certain things, it looks like it's an idea from the pastor and he's trying to force you. Because you did not read precepts in your own Bible that they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. And they broke bread from house to house, for instance. You know, uh, uh, so when we say connect with other believers and do stuff together and, and, and you know, do life with people of like passion and the same faith, the word has lied to you. To say Christians cannot be trusted. They're the most useless people on earth. So don't relate with them. Don't, don't, they say there's a network or house fellowship or whatever. No, no, no. Let them just day their day. I day my day. Yeah. That is not what we saw in the early church. Are you still with me today? And if we are going to walk in the same truth, and the same power that is saw in the early church, we have to go back to the foundation. Foundation starting with our mindset that we are joint heirs with Christ, that we are not a free moral agent, that we cannot just live anyhow, that we are here to reflect Christ. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, I think verse 13 or so, they said when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and they realized that they were ignorant and unlearned men, yeah, an educated and untrained man, they marvel, they realize that they are being with Christ. There's a way being with Christ positions you to live differently. Yeah. Even when you have not been trained in the things of this world, something must rub off on you. But it depends on how you're living. The power of God must rub off on you. Courage must rub off on you. The pioneering spirit must rub off on you. The power of God must be seen in your daily life. The audacity of faith must be seen in your life. But what is the foundation? What is the foundation? What is the foundation? So the early church moved from a fellowship in the upper room to a movement on Pentecost. A movement. A multiracial community, multicultural community with, you know, leadership. Topmost leadership, deacons, you know, according to Acts chapter 6, to an evolving network of local churches, including Gentiles, people who were not of the Jewish descent. That, is, that has been the movement. That's how it has evolved when you read all through the scriptures. 
Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the scripture says, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the day of Pentecost, we saw God empowering the movement that he started with the power of his Spirit. The Holy Spirit being the representative of the Godhead on earth today. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit lives with us today. John 14 and verse 16, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless or as orphans. I will send you the Holy Spirit. I will send you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us today and is doing a great work within the church, empowering you and I. And it's not by removing myself from the church that I will enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of the age that leads to isolation, that leads to I want to do my thing. You know, I like Jesus, but I don't like his body. Yeah, it's like standing, standing in front of your father, earthly father, and say, see, I just want my inheritance. See, all these siblings, they are useless people. Chase them away. Just let me do me and you. Give me what I want. I don't like them. This one talks too much. This one is a liar. This one is an adulterer. You know, but they are your siblings. And God is saying, look, we are a family. In this family, the blood of Jesus is washing us. We are getting better every day. It's not by you isolating yourself that we are all going to get better. Can I tell you the truth? The church of Jesus Christ has never been perfect from the early church till today. Yeah. In this series, maybe we we'll examine it a bit in church history and see. But God keeps perfecting us. Sometimes he allows us to be persecuted heavily so that we can shape up. And we've seen a measure of that persecution in recent time. And the resultant effect is that the church should shape up so that we can be more useful in the hands of God. And so that our young people will not also allow the devil to take advantage of that, to lie to them so that they can be drawn away from the church. And the devil is busy creating alternatives. And those of us who have the baton of the legacy of faith, we are looking away rather than enforcing it and passing it and insisting that some things should be done a certain way based on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and 43. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Look at all that. that these are the things that characterize the, the, the early church. The apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. See, the the average Christian today, if you call them into all this, it's as if you want to give them chloroquine <laughs> or injection. Yeah. This was not how the early church was built. If you really want to be a Christian, you want to have genuine faith, you have to examine your foundation and the reason why you are seeking God. You are not seeking God because you want to use God. Seek God because God wants to use you. God has a plan for you first and foremost. Yeah. God has a plan for you. He wants to use you. He wants you to play your part in his own plan, not your own agenda. Anyone who has an agenda that is over and above the agenda of Christ cannot successfully be a part of his body. Can I say that one more time? If you have your own personal agenda, all you want to do with your life, and it's not submitted to Christ, you cannot have a genuine faith and be a sustainable Christian. No, the devil will take advantage of you and draw you away. Until that plan is submitted to God, understanding that there's a plan that, that, that existed before you were born, before your parents were born, and God has a plan that you need to plug into. Because that's the orientation. That was the orientation of the people in the early church. And that's why they were able to do all these things. They broke bread from house to house. They continued in prayer. The Bible said, then fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. That is the legacy of the early church. That's the legacy that's been bequeathed to us as well. And that we need to think about and work on. Because the closer and clearer the reality of Jesus' ultimate sacrifice on the cross was to the people, 
the easier it was for them to lay down everything for the gospel. But today, it looks like it's not clear to us again. The essence of the sacrifice is no longer clear. In fact, even some pastors may not understand why the church exists. You know, because if you are hungry, you have looked for work and you cannot find. And they say you can start a church. Yeah, because church is now a lucrative business. Then you realize that the whole essence of this thing uh, has been turned upside down. Because like I was sharing in the other service, if you say, uh, if you mention some brands, let me say Toyota, what do they do? I can't hear you. If you say Coca-Cola, what do they do? Huh? Drinks. If you say Apple, what do they do? iPhone, iPad. So if you say church, church, what do we do? Eh? You see what we're saying? All the other things I mentioned, you gave me one word. This one, I sometimes say prayer. Sometimes say this. We are here only just to pray. Prayer is not a thing. Prayer is a way of life. What we, church is disciple, disciple, disciple. Jesus said, go into the world and make disciple of all nations. That's our, that's our product. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We are not here because we want to break through. We are here because we want to make disciples. Who will make disciples? Who will make disciples? And then the legacy continues. And it's a legacy of faith. Our methodology will include prayer, fellowship, you know, doctrines, and all those things. But at the end of the day, we're making disciples. Fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ who will exalt God's intent and purpose for their lives over and above their personal ambition and agenda. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Church is not because the pastor is hungry or he wants to, you know, uh, live big. Church is not because you want to be the leader in your industry so that you can enter Forbes list. Yeah? Because you can enter Forbes list without Jesus. All the people that are there, most of them, most of them, if you look at the list, they, they don't have Jesus there, they are there. So you don't need Jesus for that because Jesus did not come to this world. His main agenda is not to make you rich. His main agenda is for you to enter into God's family and subject yourself into God's intention and God's plans. That's his main agenda. And in doing that, he now says some other things will be added to it. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things shall be added. Are you still with me today? I said, are you still with me today? That is the genuineness of our faith. Incorruptible. When the motive is right, the perspective is right. Glory be to Jesus. So like the early church, we are called to sacrificially serve one another and uphold the teachings of the scripture, even in the face of opposition. Even in the face of opposition. Even in the face of opposition. The early church was, you know, was, uh, uh, was acclaimed to, to, to have challenges. But if those guys gave up, the church will have been a stillborn from the beginning. And, you know, just like the example of running in a relay race, you put the baton into somebody's hand. If I drop it before it gets to you, the race is over. Are you still with me today? And the big question is, are you running your part of the race? 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 As I, you know, close today, I, I, I just want to leave you with three questions that you need to ask yourself to just show that you're still running your part of the race. Then we'll continue to build upon this as we go into uh, the, the, this, this series. You know, the triad of power, according uh, to the Acts of the Apostles, uh, the power triad that we saw in the early church was, I mean, the first one, the church, our personal lives, 
and the work of our hands are meant to be evidence of God's power. And it shows in three ways. There are three things that were firmly at play in the early church. One is the Great Commission. We are in the fourth month of this year. If I ask us here today, right now, right now, and everyone watching online, that have you personally witnessed Christ to anybody this year? I'm not sure I'll get 10% of the people sitting here. And yet, you say you are not seeing the power of God in your life. The power is not for you to get another job. It's for you to witness Christ. First, first, you shall receive power and then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, where you are, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. As so push to plant churches globally. For instance, some people are still wondering, what are they doing? Is it just that they just want to? They just want to? No. God has an agenda. We are just playing our own part as a local church in that agenda. You have your part to play. If you cannot even open your mouth to obey the Great Commission, to play your part in the Great Commission, that means you're failing and the genuineness of this faith is becoming weak in your hand. Are you still with me today? Very, very important. All through the scriptures, we see people like Paul, missionary journeys that were filled with outstanding miracles and power because they kept going. They kept going. They kept going. To be an apostle is to be on the move, to keep going. The main word in apostleship is go, 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 therefore, and make disciples. Great missionaries of the early church with great power. People left all kinds of countries to come into Africa and different parts of the world just to push the gospel. I believe that part of what is going on in our nations around Africa uh, where we find it difficult to stay in our nation is because God is shaking our nest and throwing us out. So this Japa thing, it, it, God has a hand in it. It's, it may not be good for our economy and all that, but I mean, all through the, the last few weeks I was on tour in Europe, I kept telling them, you are not economic migrants. You are men and women on a mission. God sent you here on a mission. The people who brought the gospel to us, this is reverse mission. We're taking the gospel back to them. Yeah. Because the epicenter of revival has shifted and it's shifted to Africa. The fire is burning here like never before. You cannot be around where fire is burning and be sleeping the sleep of death. And still be practicing your faith anyhow. God wants to use you. He wants to use everything around you, everything you have, including your heart, which is the essence of your person. God is committed to showing up everywhere we show up for him. If you are not seeing power in your life, it's because your mouth has been shut as far as the gospel is concerned. And they went and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming his word with power. That's what it takes. If you want to see power, open your mouth. Open your, give somebody a testimony this week about the goodness of God. And somebody say with me right now. I said, are you still here? Yes. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Mark 16 and 17, and these signs shall follow those who believe. And in my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpent and scorpion, you know. And if they drink any deadly thing, the Bible says it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the essence of what we're doing. Yeah. And the Lord, uh, uh, verse, verse, uh, the, the verse 20 there, the Bible says, and the Lord working with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. Accompany. If you are not seeing accompanying signs, is that you are not going for Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Next is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus cannot say, I will send you another helper, a comforter. And you want to use, do your own Christian life without any reckoning for the Holy Spirit. Without any reckoning. This Wednesday, uh, there's, there's, there's an event here. Uh, if you if you want to rekindle the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you should come. It's the, what do we call it? Is it 10, 10 hours of, uh, of prayer or something? It's a public holiday. So they just, you can come in to pray just for one hour. 
You don't have to be here for the 10 hours. But our prayer ministry will be here. All right? Yeah, it's right there on the screen. 10, 10 hours in God's presence, our dimension, our calling. Yeah. It's public holiday. You can show up here. You can do 30 minutes, you can do one hour. And if you need baptism of the Holy Spirit, you tell them, they will minister to you. 10 hours, this place is open for prayer. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. My house shall be called the house of prayer. Come and pray. If you want to do two hours, do two hours and go. If you want to do one hour, do one hour and go. The 10 hours is not for, it's not, yeah. Because when you say, hey, 10 hours. <laughs> you want to kill somebody. Yeah. We're not going to lock the door after you come in. All right. <laughs> So just come. We're just saying that this place is open for 10 hours of encounter. People can come in and go. You need hands to be laid on you. You need baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need somebody to pray with you. You want to, you know, just join the prayer and just pray. And when you think you are filled enough, then you go. Are you still with me today? There will be many more opportunities like this. Don't stay around where the power of God is moving and we're behaving like nothing is happening, and you're just living your own life, as if God does not have a plan for you. Are you still with me today? Lastly is fellowship. Fellowship with God amongst believers. This was how the early church lived, in fellowship. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They broke bread from house to house. Today, if there's something the devil is fighting the most, it's for believers to choose to do life with unbelievers. It's for believers to treat the presence of God with levity. It's for believers not to understand the power of fellowship. Iron sharpening iron. A brother sharpening the countenance of his friend. The devil is fighting against it. We're turning even the internet against ourselves. Uh, what we're supposed to use as a tool for fellowship. We're using it as a tool to say I'm okay in isolation. Because I can get spiritual content on my own. When you focus on content without connection, your faith cannot be genuine. Can I say that one more time? There is content, there is connection. In the early church, they had both. In the new generation church, some people want to have three, four pastors. Just listen. Like Sunday morning now. You listen to this one, this one, listen. It's content. Just get content. Yeah, content. But there's nobody that's holding you accountable. When you need counseling, is it that pastor that you watch on screen that you, you are going to meet? Because there's a need for connection, fellowship. Believers knowing each other. We are doing life together. One which is a thousand, two, ten thousand. Who are the people praying for you if a bad time comes? This isolationism in, in, in your faith weakens the faith and make it only based on content. That's what we're talking about. Thank God for content. These are the days, the Bible says, in the last days, the knowledge of the word of God shall cover the earth as the water cover the sea. But it's not supposed to be to our detriment. It's supposed to be to our advantage. It's not supposed to be to the detriment of connection. Because even in church today, we are too focused on content to the detriment of connection. Somebody say, I'm coming to church. I just want to listen to the word of God. I don't want to talk to you. Nobody should talk to me. No, no, no. Let, let, let Pastor Fiji, Fiji just preach. That's why he came home. <laughs> Meanwhile, God is saying, I need to touch the life of that person. I want to connect with this person. We are created for connection, not isolation. Yes, the spirit of God is the spirit of let us. From Genesis, let us make man now. Not let me make God. Make them in my own image. It's let us. Even God connected. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Where do you get this from? I'm a Christian just by myself. God knows who is serving him. You know? I don't need a pastor. I don't need, uh, I don't need any leader. I don't, need any, I don't even need a Christian friend. I just want to listen to the word of God. Content without connection. It weakens your faith. It cannot get to the next level like that. 
Yeah. And some people are raising their children also on content only. You sit them down to watch online. They don't come to church. Your children don't even know what church looks like. That is not what we saw in the early church. Some people, have, some people don't know what it means to be connected to a church and serve in their church and participate in the expansion of the kingdom of God, in church planting, in winning souls. You just want content. Content. And Bible says in the last days, some will eat teachers unto themselves. They will develop each in years. That's what is happening now, right now. Thank God for YouTube. Everywhere, you know, everybody has somebody they're listening to and all that, and it's great. And our church is also a very resourceful church. Our YouTube content is, you know, powerful. Some people not even touch it. And then some people, that's all they want. Just sit with that one. I don't want to know anybody. I don't want... That is not the kind of faith that has been decreed to us. Stand on your faith, everybody. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless... Lift your two hands to Jesus. And I want you to begin to talk to God. This faith will not be destroyed in my hand. Yeah. This faith... My faith will be genuine. My faith will be genuine. It will not spoil in my hand. Whether you are a first generation Christian, a second generation or third generation, I want you to speak to God today. First and foremost, thank him for the gift of salvation. Father, I thank you that I can be named as a part of this movement. I thank you that, 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 that I still know you and I have you in my heart. And if you don't know Jesus yet, I'm going to give you an opportunity after now. But I wanted to thank him. Thank him for his sacrifice. Thank him for his sacrifice. It's at the foundation of your, his calling upon your life. And somebody's praying right now, Lord, I need your presence in my life like never before. I need the Holy Spirit in my life like never before. I will not disdain the presence of the Holy Spirit. Somebody's receiving power to be a witness. That courage will come into my heart to witness Christ. That I will seek for the Holy Spirit much more than never before. That I will choose not to do this life without divine presence. I want you to talk to God right now. I will not do this life without divine presence. I will not do this life without divine presence. Somebody is receiving grace that your house will be a house of prayer. That your life will be a life of prayer. Receive grace right now. Receive grace right now. That everything we have seen in the foundation of the early church, it will be a part of the foundation of my life also. My Christianity will not be that of a spectator. My Christianity will not be that of a commentator. My Christianity will not be that of a critic of the church. Not just somebody that criticizes only. It's okay to give feedback. My Christianity will be that of a participator, a participant. Lord, I want to be a part of your agenda. I want to be a part of your agenda. Open my eyes to know your move for this season. Open my eyes to understand your agenda for this season. Help me to align with your agenda for my life, for my church, and for the global church. Because I know I have a part to play. This legacy of faith must not spoil in my hand. It must not spoil in my hand. It must not spoil in my hand. And somebody is also praying today, Lord, I release myself to be recruited as a laborer. I release myself to be recruited as a laborer. The Bible says the harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. I recruit myself, I receive, release myself to be recruited as a laborer, as a laborer, as a laborer. That the labor of my hand, that my living and waking up moment will bring glory to you and contribute vitally to the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. That I will not be an onlooker, but I will be a participator in your divine agenda. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting Father. And lastly today, can you lift your two hands 
and just speak over the month of April. Say, Father, in this month, your presence is upon me. Everywhere I go, I carry divine presence. Everywhere I show up, demons flee at my appearance. The power of God is made available to me. Somebody declared in the month of April, no sickness. No sickness. No sickness. The power of God is available for me. I am unstoppable. I represent Christ everywhere I go. My journeys are accident free. Whatever could cannot hold Jesus down will not hold me down in April. I want to declare. Let your mouth not be short right now. Declare it. Let, let God hear you. Let demons hear you. That you carry God. And God is going to be a perpetual manifestation in the month of April. Somebody declare that my prayers will carry power in the month of April. As I open my mouth to declare the word of God, it will come to pass. Doors are open to me in April. The agenda of God prospers in my life in the month of April. Declare today that the agenda of God will prosper in your life in the month of April. Father, let your agenda prosper in my hand. Let it prosper in my life in the month of April. Let your kingdom come in my business, in my family, in my marriage. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let it not be my agenda. Let it be your agenda. Let the agenda of Jesus prosper in my life in this new month. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands to him and bless him. Father, we honor you. We honor you. As we release ourselves to you, let your agenda prosper in our life in this new month. Lord, cause our hearts to open to your divine agenda. Help us to understand what you are doing in this age. Between your ascension and your return, every assignment that is meant for us individually and as a church, let them not elude us. In the name of Jesus. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may not sleep the sleep of death. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the order of destruction be broken. Let the order of discouragement be broken. Let somebody step into the fullness of your plan and your purpose. In the name of Jesus. Let the gift of God be found to flame in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let the hold of fear be broken. In the name of Jesus. We receive the manifestation of sound mind. Oil of joy. Garment of praise. In the name of Jesus. Courage to press into divine agenda. We are unstoppable. In the precious name of Jesus. We decree and declare that the generation behind us uh, will not be recalcitrant. Grace rests upon them in the name of Jesus. We receive wisdom to contend for this faith. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you glory and we give you praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody who is blessed today, put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. You may have your seat. Let's be seated just, just for a moment. I want the privacy of this moment. Uh, no one moving around, please. Let's, let's be seated. And can you please bow down your head just for one minute? I just want to give an opportunity to anyone who may be in this service or online who is saying, Pastor, I've heard everything that you said, but something in me still feel disconnected. I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I think it's time that I take that step just to allow Christ into my life. Or somebody saying, I made that decision before, but I backslid into sin. And I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Whether you're on the gallery, on the main floor, or online, I want to pray for you just right where you are. Our time is fast spent under. I just want to spend one minute, one minute of prayer over you. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus right where you are. If you don't mind, can you lift your right hand above your head just as a sign of your surrender and your willingness to have Christ into your life? 
and I'm going to pray for you just right where you are. Just remain where you are and I'm going to pray for you. If you are online, I want you to go to the chat or comment and just say, I want to give my life to Jesus or I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. While, while we all just bow our heads for the privacy of the moment, if your hand is up, I want you to say this prayer after me. If your hand is up, can you stand by your chair where you are? Can you just stand where you are? Just stand where you are. Just stand where you are and I'm going to pray for you. Just stand right now. Right now. You know Jesus is touching your heart. I just want you to stand. Just stand and let's say this prayer together. Jesus will come into your heart and you will never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. If you're online, go to the chat and let us know that you're saying this prayer with me right now. Right now. Right now. If you're saying the prayer with me, with boldness in your heart, with unrestricted passion for the presence of God in your life, I wanted to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I've sinned against you and I'm disconnected. But I want to reconnect. I want to have a new start with you. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Start something new in my life. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning. Today, I willingly, completely surrender my life to you. Thank you for accepting me. I declare that I'm now born again. I'm a child of God and I have a new beginning in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. If you just said that prayer with me, I, want, uh, I just want to uh, pray over you that God will begin a good work will perfect it, that the hold of fear is broken over your heart, that the spirit of the living God will start to steer your heart from this point, and that God will hold you strong the remaining days of your life in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you said a prayer and you're in the room, if you are uh, you know, accosted by any of our officials, I wanted to just obey them. If you're online, our officials are there and they would want to just, you know, follow through with you and, 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 and you know, be a blessing to you and send you some of our materials after now and we believe that that will help in your faith journey from this moment forward. Thank you for the decision you have made today and may the Lord bless you. Praise God. All right, very quickly, we want to give to God as our custom, and I want to ask that you generously give to God. Every giving here at the Elevation Church goes into God's divine agenda of, you know, expanding his kingdom. And so that's why we give generously. This church is one of the most generous churches on earth. I, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. The people in this church who are extremely generous to God. And all we're asking is that you join this movement of generous people. Uh, up to date, no agenda of God has failed in our church on an account of lack of finance. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And that's a testament to the generosity of the people that call the Elevation Church their home. And it's not just in this center, it's globally. There's no agenda, no plan that God has given to us as a church that we have not been able to execute because of lack of fund. I thought you would clap for yourself. And God is doing great things here. And there's no lack in this church. No lack at all. Praise God. And if you are new here, this is who we are. We're generous people. Generous to God, generous to humanity. This church is a blessing to our world. And it's a blessing to the kingdom of God. And it's my real lifetime privilege to be able to pastor this church. Yeah. And thank you for making uh, ministry easy for us to do through your giving. Everyone who supported uh, 
everyone who suffered a misfortune from the demolition that happened across this axis because of the highway that is coming on. I know it will take government some time before they can even uh, you know, pay the people whose houses were demolished, the ones that were legit and were still on the right of way. And so because of that, I mean, we gave a report last Sunday. As of last Sunday, about 80 families have been sorted already and relocated into proper accommodation. And I think about 125 or 130 families in this church were affected by that and were committed to helping everyone who is a genuine member of this church whose case has been vetted and needs accommodation. Uh, so for some of these people, they are already settled into accommodation, paid for for one full year. Yeah. And in the midst of all this, for opening new churches, this past Friday, I went to do groundbreaking for three new centers where we're building from scratch in, here in Lagos. Uh, Greater Lekki Church in Shangotedo, Ikorodu, our first center in Ikorodu, and Ogba Church. The construction has started, and it will not stop in the name of Jesus, because we believe that greatness has come into those neighborhoods. And uh, what God is doing here is spreading around the world, and God has been faithful to his word. And I know that as you continue to give and support the work, work, work of God from your heart, from your sweat, from the blessing of God on your business, no business will die here. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every innovative idea that God has given you, receive funding and sponsorship. In the name of Jesus, Amen. no plan of God for your life shall be aborted Amen. on the account of lack of money. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. as you continue to follow God and sow seeds here, may God raise people for you. Amen. May funding come to you from all around the world. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. may new doors of opportunity open to you. Amen. May God raise partnership and platform from you, for you globally. May the name of your business be mentioned globally. Amen. May your business become a global brand. Amen. May your career become a global career. Amen. May funds be attracted to you from all around the world. Amen. You are unstoppable Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we pray over all the tithes and offerings and thanksgiving seeds. Father, we ask that you receive all this as our worship to you and cause the heavens to open over every giver Amen. to the end that there shall be no lack in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Somebody say better, amen. amen.